Hey, it's Scott Petrak with another episode of the Brown Zone Zone Coverage Podcast. The subject, the subject is simple this week, the schedule. It was released Thursday night, and there's plenty to dissect. Here to join me is Dave Chodowski of Go, WKYC's Morning News. What's up, Chud? Scott, how are you? Yeah, just talked about it on the morning show here on Go. I put a little piece together highlighting the, uh, you know, main points when it comes to the schedule. So, I don't know. I, the, the schedule has always been an exciting time for me as a fan, but also for work. And it doesn't affect me as much now or as it does you. But back when I was in the sports department, th- this was when, I mean, my whole life for the, you know, summer and fall would be planned around this schedule. And, you know, th- that's the case for a lot of people that maybe want to follow them on the road or, you know, tailgating, knowing what Mondays they're going to want to take off <laughs> when yeah. they're going to be home. So, the schedule's always – I just think it's a big deal. I really do, and uh, I, I always get into it. Yeah, it's interesting. There's certainly reason to get excited about it, right? And I, I get it. People plan trips. People plan you – know, I've been on plenty of planes going to road trips with a bunch of Browns fans. So you want to, you know, book your hotels, you want to book your flights. Um, I feel like, personally, I may be having a little backlash to it because it's such an event now, right? You see tweets about it. and everything for yeah. weeks and weeks and weeks that by the time it gets the, you know, the release last night at eight o'clock, um, it's like, Oh, okay. It, you know, it almost feels anticlimactic because the NFL has built it up so much. And I know that's what the league does. Right. So I understand yeah. that completely. And it doesn't change the importance of the schedule and it is important and knowing, and we obviously, we knew the opponents ahead of time. Right. But there is, I think there's a lot of information to be gained by the order of opponents and, um, you know, the, when you're on the road and when you're at home and when you're playing on holidays, all those things from a team standpoint and from a fan standpoint. So I certainly get it. I certainly wrote my stories last night about it. Um, but it's just interesting how big it's become. And I'm sure I've told the story. I, I'm guessing I told the story, but so I'll be quick about it. But just how much it's changed. I mean, I got married in 2005 and that schedule, like it came out during the day. Um, I was at an actual, like a convention or at a meeting in Columbus, like a AP convention thing in Columbus. And my wife called me because we were waiting. She was my fiance at the time because we were waiting to plan our wedding. We needed to know the schedule before we could plan the date for the bye week. So, um, you know, back then, but that's what I'm saying. It was like during the day, it was just came out like on a random Tuesday. And now it's this primetime event where, um, you know, it seems like the world stops for it. Yeah, I, I got married in March <laughs> because specifically to stay away from, you know, Brown season and, and also Indians, now Guardians. And the irony in, in it all is uh, I get married in March and uh, Cleveland State goes to the NCAA <laughs> tournament. It's pretty funny. And they've gone, what, three times ever in the history. And uh, one of them was uh, 2009 when I got married. So uh, it, it was pretty funny that that happened. But, uh, you know, I still got to go get married on my honeymoon. Not sure. Cleveland State wasn't keeping me from that. But uh, so I guess the thing that stands out to me, and there's so many different ways to take it, but one headline for me is just that the NFL doesn't trust the Browns. I mean, only two primetime games and a lot of one o'clock games. And I know a lot of games at the end of the year, the timing hasn't been set yet, but it's that Browns 1 p.m. Sunday games. You have a lot of those only two primetime games. So I think that that suggests a lot of how the NFL kind of feels about the Browns. I think there's something to be said for that, Chud. I really do. And and this is going to carry over. This is going to hang above everything we talk about for a long time is the Deshaun Watson situation. If the schedule makers don't know how long Deshaun or, or if Deshaun Watson is going to be suspended, it's tough to trust the Browns, right? Because he is such a big part of this team, obviously, quarterback. And that's why they went and got him, so they could compete and make a Super Bowl run against these other AFC teams with big-time quarterbacks. But if you don't know if the guy's going to miss four, six, eight, ten, seventeen 10, 17 games, it's awful hard to say, yeah, the Browns are going to be one of the elite teams in the AFC. So I think that's part of it. And, and I also wouldn't discount – I mean, I, I'm just – I don't know this for a fact, but does the NFL want to 
promote Deshaun Watson given the 22 ongoing civil lawsuits, right? Like, do they want him to be a face, right? You have Tom Brady's a face of the league and Patrick Mahomes is a face of the league and Josh Allen's a face of the league. Do you want Deshaun Watson, if you're the league, to promote it like that, given everything that's still going on with him? Um, I, I think that's a question worth, worth asking. And when you looked at, like, all the NFL networks, all the networks that carry the games sent out press releases last night, right? CBS, NBC, I don't know if I got one from Fox, but CBS, NBC, ESPN. I got emails from all those networks touting the quarterback matchups. And I did not see Deshaun Watson's name in any of those. So I just think that's something worth considering or worth thinking about when you talk about the Browns only have two primetime games. Now, that number could grow. Week 15 against Baltimore could be on a Saturday or it could be – I don't think it will be Sunday night, but it could be a Saturday night game. And then week 18, the finale, everything's on the table depending on, you know, if the Browns are competing for a playoff spot or not. And they could always get flexed to a Sunday night game starting in week five. But your point is well taken, Chubb. There's plenty of teams that got more than two prime time games, and that's all the Browns got. That's a great point. I mean, you look at Russell Wilson week one, right, uh, yeah. going up against Seattle. And, and you wonder if you knew for sure Watson was playing with that Houston game have been week one, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, I could be making something up there. Uh, but it is much later in the year, right? Yeah, that one's, that one's weird for me because I kind of feel like if you're the NFL, you wouldn't want that to become a big deal, right? The guy's going back to where he's still being deposed, right? This is where all, most of the accusations came from, right? Um, we already went and had two grand juries not indict him in Houston. Would you want to make a big deal about him going back there? So I thought it might happen early in the season, thinking if he suspended, the story really gets underplayed, you know, kind of pushed to the background because he's not going to – you know, he wouldn't make the trip. But for the Browns, for, for the league to schedule later, I don't know, think you can read into it, anything into it. I'm just saying I thought if the league really wanted to minimize that storyline, it would have been early in the season thinking there's a chance for the suspension, right? We're all assuming – if there's a suspension this season, it would happen at the beginning of the season. Um, but that's not what they did. It's just kind of buried in the middle of the year. Yeah, no question. So another thing, and I, I was disappointed no Sunday night football games on NBC. Obviously, I work yeah. at Channel 3, NBC. I would have liked to have seen them get, you know, one Thursday, one Monday, one Sunday. That, you know, I, I'm not going to be greedy. I mean, they got two. I mean, obviously, you know they're going to get one. But uh, disappointed they're not on the Sunday night slate. For yeah, now. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the biggest game, right? I mean, <clears throat> the biggest game of the week has become Sunday night. Now we'll see, you know, Monday night, ESPN with Monday night wants to make a run at that, yeah. you know, with Joe Buck and Troy Aikman and obviously the, the Manning cast as well. But Sunday night's been the king for a while now. So, yeah, I, I think that's the, that's the biggest slate. And the fact that the Browns aren't on it, I think is probably disappointing for fans. and. Um, again, they could be flexed in there, right? NBC, because it's such a lucrative TV contract, um, has the power to flex games into Sunday Night Football, right? If their game turns out to be a dud, right, the teams that they thought would be good are no longer good or whatever the situation is, um, they can flex games. So the Browns could wind up there. But, I mean, they had one last year, right? They were in Baltimore in that game where they got all the interceptions and still couldn't win um, was a Sunday nighter after Thanksgiving. So. I get it. That's a that's a it's a good spot for a team to be in, and it, it goes back to our original talking points with it. That's one of the spots that the Browns were not picked for. Yeah, I, I briefly looked at the Thursday night slate. It looks like they the, the matchups look a little better. Usually Thursday night football, you know, it's got the Jags versus the Jets, and actually that might be one later in the year. But I guess there's more of those. It looked like there were some uh, tastier matchups, although you never know until the season starts, right? But looks like there were some more marquee games there anyway. Well, I but, think that's um, I think that's because Amazon is paying a bunch right. of money for those rights now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's my point. It looks yeah. like they're uh, beefing those up. One thing I also looked at was you got to win games early. Six of the last nine games are on the road. I, I think that's a 
the bye week comes at a great time, so that's good. We don't have a late bye. But oh, was that week nine? I think is the bye. Yep. yep, yep. But but six and nine on the road to end it after the bye, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're looking. So we got the bye is first week in November, um, week nine, and then you get at Miami, at Buffalo, home for Tampa Bay and Tom Brady, at Houston, at Cincy, home Baltimore, home New Orleans, at Washington, at Pittsburgh. So, yeah, six out of the nine games, um, which is a tough finishing stretch, right? Those The Browns have three two-game homestands, and two of those are before the bye. They have three two-game road trips. I mean, they come home, but you know what I'm saying, road trips. And all three of those are after the bye. <clears throat> so the schedule does get tougher um, from a travel standpoint for sure, and just looking at the games, right? I mean, if you look at those, whatever, it's eight, nine games after the bye, Houston looks like the easiest one. You know, at Washington on New Year's Day, Maybe who knows what Washington will be like. Every other one of those teams you would think is a playoff contender. You know, we can debate about Pittsburgh, but um, at Pittsburgh in the finale is not going to be a gimme by any stretch. So um, I would say at least seven of those games are difficult games, um, and six of them are on the road. I think you're right, Chud. And it goes back to – or not back to – this is – like, when I looked at the schedule, there's two things that jumped out at me. One, you look at the primetime games, which we talked about, right? Week three, the Thursday nighter at home against Pittsburgh. And then week eight, the Monday nighter, right before the bye, against the Bengals. So it's good that the Browns, both primetime games are at home. That's exciting for fans. Um, but after primetime, it was, to me, the beginning of the schedule is soft, right? It's like a soft opening. You get at Carolina, who's probably not going to be any good. We don't know who's playing quarterback for them. Home for the Jets. The Jets come off in a terrible year. Pittsburgh's figuring out what to do without Ben Roethlisberger. And at Atlanta, who, you know, it looks like Marcus Mariota will probably be quarterback. So the first four games certainly seem winnable. And you can make the argument they're even winnable if Deshaun Watson's not quarterback, right? And the Browns have to go with Jacoby Brissett. But then it gets a lot harder, starting with Chargers, Patriots at home, but weeks five and six. And then we got the stretch that you mentioned, right? So um, the Browns better make some hay early and um, whether or not Deshaun Watson is eligible to play or not, because it's going to be difficult and they're going to get into, it's going to be a grind starting, not that the whole season isn't a grind, but you know what I mean? Starting week five, yeah. starting week five, it, it really is a grind, Chud. And, you know, there's no, or I mentioned white right, charges week five, that's Patriots, Ravens, Bengals, by Dolphins, Buffalo, blah, blah, all the games we just went through. It really, it looks like the Texans are the next breather, if you want to even call it that, right? After week four, the next breather comes at week 13. So, you know, I mean, we, I expect the Browns to be good. They have a lot of talent. Again, a lot depends on how many games Deshaun Watson plays. But even if you're good, <laughs> you still, you got to play to that level, especially given. Yeah. Which to me feels like a difficult, a difficult schedule. Yeah, a lot of holiday uh, plans with your brownies. Yeah. <laughs> New Year's Day, Christmas Eve, Halloween night. Yeah. Uh, so a lot, a lot of that, a lot of that falls there. Man, could you imagine if Baker was on Carolina and that was the way the year opened up? Well, I'm telling. I know that's part of my story on Brownzone.com. Is it looks like you know, just an opener, right? And there's always, the opener's always highly anticipated. So there will be excitement, period, about the Browns going to Carolina. Um, but if the quarterback variables turn out to be like what they could be, and Deshaun Watson plays, obviously then there's more excitement if you're a fan and not one of the fans turned off by the fact that the Browns have Deshaun Watson. And I'm not ruling out a chance that Baker Mayfield still winds up in Carolina. So, right. Uh, right on one end of the spectrum, you could have Deshaun Watson versus Baker Mayfield, which would be the most interesting, fascinating, talked about quarterback matchup, right? And take that game to another level. Or you could have Jacoby Brissett versus rookie Matt, Matt Corral, right? And all of a sudden, there's not nearly the buzz around that game, especially nationally. I mean, Browns fans would still be excited. So, uh, we won't know that for a while, right? Um, 
and now if Baker got traded there tomorrow, then obviously there'd be a lot more buzz to it immediately. Um, and we won't know about Watson for a while. So I, I think that's, I think that's interesting that it could go so many different directions. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, you know, Carolina, it, it, again, we've talked about it a million times, Judd. It's Sam Darnold, it's Matt Corral, or you could bring in Baker Mayfield, right? And give yourself, in my mind, a better chance to win in 2022 for a coach, Matt Rule, who needs to win. So, I again, I've not thrown that option out. I think it depends on how much money the Browns would be willing to pay a Baker Mayfield salary. But I would keep my eye on that. And certainly that game – I mean, just think about Baker week mm. one with the new team hosting his old team. Could you imagine just what he would say leading up to that game? And what I mean, oh, what, I mean, how fired up he'll be. Right. I mean, remember we saw, I think it was Demarius Randall hand the ball to Hugh Jackson when he was coaching for the Bengals after he got fired by the Browns that year, right? 2018. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. would, I mean, would Baker do something crazy with Kevin Stefanski? What would he, I mean, would, he been talking. <laughs> would he be talking junk to Miles Garrett the whole time? I mean, it would really be. It would really be something to see. I think, right? Because you know, maybe Baker try to be on his best behavior with his new team, but that doesn't strike me as Baker. I think he would be as fired up as he's ever been to face his former team in Week One. So, um, from a storyline standpoint, I'm certainly rooting for that. And they've only won one home opener, or not home opener, one opener, one season opener since they've come back. That is so right? hard to believe. Yeah, they're one twenty-one and one. It's 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 almost in, impossible to believe that they could be that yeah. bad. But they've been that bad. It doesn't matter who's coaching. Doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. I mean, <laughs> you look at it. The one win was Jeff Garcia in two thousand and four versus the Ravens, and the tie was two thousand eighteen against the Steelers with Tyrod Taylor. Right, so they've had all these other quarterbacks and guys that stayed for one season, um, got the one win and the one tie. So yeah, I mean, if this looks like a game they could win, but you know, if you're a Browns fan, there's plenty of openers you thought, hey, they're going to win this game, and they don't. I remember going to Tampa Bay when Tampa Bay wasn't any good, and Jake DeLome was going to quarterback for the Browns, and he hurts his ankle in the in the opener, and he's trying to play on a bum ankle. And they wound up losing to Tampa, right? And it felt like a game, all right, this Browns team's going to go in and has a good chance to win and don't get it done. So there's just, I mean, I'm sure there's a million of those examples, right? We, I mean, there are plenty of years where the Browns are bad. But then there are plenty of years where we thought the Browns would be good and then they get beaten in the opener, right? 2008, they were coming off that good, that 10-win 2007 season. And then they lose the opener in 2008. I think Braylon Edwards dropped a long pass that would have changed the game. So anyway, there's a million bad examples from openers, but yeah, one twenty-one and one. Yeah, and the AFC North. I mean, I expect Baltimore to be back. Cincinnati to come back to earth a little bit doesn't mean they won't make the playoffs. And I, I tell you, don't count the Steelers out. I, I you know, they have enough uh, weaponry in that offense to still, you know, cause problems. And the last thing you want to do is be zero and two heading into that. Thursday night game, um, you know, you at least want to be one and one, but certainly you feel like you want to be two and oh, uh, heading into that third game. So that a lot of importance at the very beginning of that schedule. Yeah, there, there's no doubt, Chud, and I'm glad you brought up Pittsburgh, right? And, and I mentioned that, you know, it's a the, the beginning of the schedule seems easier. And I was talking to um, one of my colleagues, Nate Elric from the Akron Beacon Journal, and he's like, hey, I'm not taking, you know, the Browns can't take Pittsburgh for granted, and I get that. And I think fans might be tempted to do that, given that Ben Roethlisberger is not there, um, given that we don't know who's going to quarterback for the Steelers, right? Is it going to be um, Mitch Trubisky? Is it going to be the rookie Kenny Pickett, right? So there's certainly questions at the most important position. But your point is well taken. The Steelers are the Steelers. They've never had a losing season under Coach Mike Tomlin. Um, they're not just – they're not in a total rebuild. That's not what the Steelers do. So if they get quality quarterback play, whether it's Pickett or whether it's Trubisky, they're going to be good or, or, or at least competitive. And that defense isn't going anywhere. So, yeah, while, while if Deshaun Watson plays, certainly you think the Browns have the edge and the Browns have a talented roster. Um, there's nothing that's 
a gimme about playing the Steelers, and they certainly can't be overlooked. And when I talk about the first four games, maybe there should be an asterisk, asterisk next to Pittsburgh, and it's really three of those first four games um, look like the Browns should win them, and then you have the Steelers in prime time on Thursday night. It could be Kenny Pickett's, you know, coming out part of the league um, or to the world. We don't know. Um, but it, that's certainly part of – you can't take the Steelers. You can't overlook the Steelers. And Eric, we're talking about week three. The same thing applies to week 18, right? The Browns go to Pittsburgh. And I've been to Pittsburgh for so many finales, I can't even count them. The Browns have played Pittsburgh in the finale 10 out of the last 15 years. Or this will be 10 out of the last 15 years. Some of those have been at First Energy Stadium, but most have been at Heinz Field. And I've seen a number of coaches get fired after losing to Pittsburgh in the finale. So, you know, the best case scenario is the Browns have already locked up a playoff spot and that game is meaningless, right? A, a more seemingly more realistic uh, scenario is the Browns have to win week 18 at Pittsburgh in January to go to the playoffs, right? Like the, I can, you can envision that scenario, right? That, that it's going to be a jammed AFC North. It's going to be a jammed AFC playoff race. And the Browns have to go into Pittsburgh and win. And any Browns fan would be concerned about that, right? It, I don't think anybody's going, oh, yeah, that's a great way to end the season um, because we know the damage that Pittsburgh can do. Yeah. Uh, a couple things here. The Browns could receive at least two more primetime games in their schedule. The league has a determined kickoff times for week 15 or 18. That's the Ravens Steelers. Yep. Not sure. I can't remember if we mentioned that or not. Uh, week 15, there's three of five designated matchups will be played on a Saturday with the remainder to be played on Sunday. Uh, week 18, two games will be played on Saturday. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff at the uh, end of the year. You got the, the flex schedule, which we talked about. Um, so this year, last year, they had nine home games and eight on the road. This year, it's flipped, right? Eight at yep. home and nine on the road. Preseason starts at Jacksonville on Friday, August 12th. Then they play Philly. They practice with Philly, and then they play Philly at home in the Bears. So yep. three preseason games. So those are a couple uh, other highlights. Uh, before we go here, I guess, you know, obviously, you, you know, my eyes are always looking at primetime. I'm always looking. You always want to see who the first game is. There's a lot of things that you look at. But, Scott, what popped out for you that you necessarily weren't looking for that kind of popped out? For me, it was the week 11 and 12 back-to-back -back at Buffalo, home to Tampa Bay, Josh Allen and the Bills, who many think will go to the Super Bowl, and then Tampa Bay and Tom Brady. That back-to-back -back matchup um, – and you can even include at Miami with, you know, getting Tyree right. Kill in there. But it's an interesting little stretch there. But I'm, I'm specifically looking at that two-game back-to-back. That that popped out to me right away. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point, Judd. You're looking at two of the – I mean, you're looking at the all-time greatest quarterback, right? And then Josh Allen is an MVP candidate in the NFL. And, but you know, the lasting impression is how well he played in that playoff game in Kansas City, even though they lost – um, he was outstanding. So, and Buffalo is the Super Bowl favorite, right? Uh, at least in the sports book I looked up last night, Buffalo is a Super Bowl favorite. So, um, in Tampa, I think Tampa is the favorite in the NFC. So, yeah, those two games are huge games, right? Big quarterback matchups will be tough for the Browns. Getting Tom Brady at home, I mean, that's from a fan perspective, you got tickets to that game. That's a great one to have tickets for, right? It could be the last time. Tom Brady plays um, in Cleveland. So there's something special about that. So, yeah, I, I think that's a really good thing to point out, Chud. Um, you know, I, I was focused on the division a little bit. Last year, it was backloaded. They didn't play a division game until week eight um, in, oh, 2000, yeah. in 2021. This year, they play three before the bye. So they see every one of the rivals before the bye, and then – they see him again in the last five weeks. Three of the last five games are AFC North games. You meant, We mentioned how there's some uncertainty to the um, Week 15 and Week 18 against Baltimore and Pittsburgh. But um, the division games are so important, obviously. Um, the Browns have never won an AFC North title. 
So you got to keep an eye on that. You got to think they got to win at least four games if they're going to win the division, right? Go at least four and two inside the North if they're going to have a chance to win the division. Um, so I always keep an eye out for when those games are. That's a good point. And I'm glad there's no back to back against the Ravens like there was last year yeah, right. with that, <laughs> with that five. That was silly. Yeah. So, um, well, I am not going to play the schedule game with you. I'm sorry. I just don't think we can do that. I mean, it, <laughs> we, how many people are doing the schedule game right now? You know, uh, I know. And you know what? I mean, it's silly to do anyway. Right. And in your head, you do it right. I went through and said, OK, well, you know, if they win X number of games at home and these are winning right. road games, whatever. Um, but and I don't want to sound like I'm beating a dead horse, but until we know if and when Deshaun Watson suspended, it, it's impossible to do that. It's impossible to make predictions about how many games the Browns will win. It, it's impossible to predict if they're going to be able to compete in the North or in the AFC um, because there's a huge drop off from Deshaun Watson to Jacoby Percent. I know the Browns um, value Jacoby Percent highly, and I get that, but. He's not a pro bowler like Deshaun Watson, right? He's not a top five, seven, whatever number that is, quarterback that Deshaun Watson is. So um, I think once we know um, about any discipline from the league or when that discipline would be, um, I think as silly as it still might be, then you could play the schedule game. Um, but right now is probably the not, the, not the right time to do that. I agree with you, Chuck. Right. I'm good. I'm good if you are. So yeah, um, let me hit a couple. Recap. Yeah, I got a couple quick nuggets. Is they play the yeah. Browns play five playoff teams from a year ago. Um, okay, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, New England, Tampa Bay. Um, obviously, they play everybody in the AFC East, everybody in, in the NFC South. That Washington game on New Year's Day is that extra game, right? The seventeenth game. Um, the added opponent is Washington. Um, right, like you said, last year the Browns had eight or nine home games. This year it's nine road games, and that Washington game is that extra game. Um, and then I, I started talking about my wedding. We could not plan it until we knew what the bye week was. And I'll finish it with um, my wife's cousin, great friend of hers. Their son's getting married on December 17th, and she texted me this week um, saying, I don't want it to be a football weekend because she didn't want the hotel to be overrun by crazy Steelers fans. Well, it turns out that that's the week where the Ravens will be here. And not only that, so there's going to be crazy football fans at the hotel. Um, not only that, but they, nobody knows when the, if the game's going to be on that Saturday with the wedding or the next day, December 18th. So, uh, you know, and not obviously the wedding will still go on, but that's something people need to know. People would want to know, oh, my gosh, is the game, is the wedding conflicting with the wedding, with the game? Um, is the game the next day, you know, so um, she's not going to, she wasn't happy about that when I told her um, that it is in limbo and will continue to be in limbo. I like, I don't think that the date and time of the game, that's not going to be announced until like November. So um, yeah. she's just going to ask her to live with that, but it's tough. And then I got to figure it out, you know, I'm hoping it's a Sunday game because it's a wedding that not only do I want to be at, I probably need to be at. Um, so hopefully the Browns are not playing on that Saturday conflicting with um, Jimmy Tui's wedding. So. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Real <laughs> oh, life, right? Real life in the football. Yep, that's what happens. So. Certainly. Well, thanks, Chud. I appreciate the time. I'm glad we got this in because I think uh, people are interested in the schedule. Certainly, I know, uh, I know we are, so I'm glad we were able to talk about this on an early Friday morning. Thanks, bud. Yeah, no question. Love it. Here we go. All right. Go cool. Brownies. Yeah, and I'll be at um just I'll be at rookie mini camp later. This is, we're taping this Friday morning. I'll be at rookie mini camp um starting at noon today. We get out there, we get to watch talk to the draft picks, watch a practice. Um, so I'll have stuff about that um on bronzone.com later Friday and then um probably through the weekend, depending on what stories come out of there. So it'll be good to get to watch a practice, first practice. Um, gotten to watch since the end of last season. So that's good. Get your eyes on some of these draft picks. See how uh, David Bell, the receiver, looks running around. So that should be fun. So thank you for uh, Dave Chodowski. This is Scott Petrak, another episode of the Zone Coverage Podcast. And you can read all my work at brownzone.com. Thanks.